Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel, McNally Money, home of all things stock, investment, and personal finance related. Now today's video is going to be very exciting. We're talking about a company that I currently hold. It's actually my largest holding of any company in all of my portfolios combined. I currently have about $15,000 of this stock and they just reported phenomenal Q1 numbers for 2021. Now the company name is The Valens Company. They currently operate in BC, but they're building out a facility in the Toronto area as well. The company's got a number of exciting catalysts coming their way. I just listened to the investor call as well, and I think management is doing a fantastic job, and this is a company that I'm extremely bullish on moving forward. So I wanted to take you guys through their business model, some of the upcoming opportunities that they have, and the things that I like so much about what this company is currently doing. Now before we get into the video, please take a second to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let me know in the comment section below if you currently hold shares of the Valens company and how you think this company stacks up to others in the small cap MJ space here in Canada. Now without further ado, let's roll the intro clip and get into today's video. Okay guys, that's right. So today we're going to be talking about the Valens company. As you can see, they had an absolute massive move today, up 45 cents Canadian, or just about 20% overall on the back of that phenomenal Q1 earnings release yesterday, an excellent analyst call this morning. Now this company was trading up over $3 on April 5th. It pulled back a little bit and hit the mid 240s, and they're now well on their way back to that $3 price point. Now this stock is of particular importance and interest to me. I currently hold about $16,000 of this stock across all my different portfolios and just under 5,700 shares. So this is definitely my biggest position overall. This is a company that I'm extremely bullish on. I think they've got a ton of potential moving forward and this is definitely one that I see becoming a 10, 15 or $20 stock over the next five to 10 years. Now in this video, I'm going to walk you through my bullish thesis on this company, their current business model, the products that they offer and the partnerships that they have. We're then going to jump into the Q1 earnings release and talk about how this company stacks up to others in the Canadian MJ space. A current market cap on this company is about $425 million after today's big price move. It is still trading under $3, so it's definitely a penny stock in my opinion. And this is one that I'm going to look to continue to add anywhere under that $2.50 Canadian price point. So for those of you who are new to Valens or unfamiliar with what their business model actually is or how they generate money, this company was traditionally an extraction play. So they really focused on a multitude of different extraction methods and they would actually do this for other companies and receive a tolling revenue. So companies would send them their dried product or their cultivated biomass. They would then extract it and send it back to those initial companies which they could then use for various products or inputs into other products. Now this area of the value chain at that point in time a couple years ago had extremely high margins. There was very little competition and Valens offered a number of different extraction methods that were proprietary and other companies in Canada didn't offer. So that allowed them to generate strong revenue and use that money to build out their future plans and vision for the company. Now phase two is where we're currently at right now and Valens has shifted from purely extraction or third-party tolling into the CPG space, so consumer packaged goods space, and they're actually now starting to manufacture a number of different SKUs on their own. So in recent quarters, they've manufactured anywhere from 60 plus SKUs, and now in the most recent quarter, they're down into the 50s, and they're really focusing on this strategy now, which their CEO Tyler has coined as fewer, bigger, and better. So they're producing fewer SKUs, they're going after bigger segments of the market, and they're gonna compete in a better or more efficient way than anyone else in that space. And you're gonna see that as a general theme through this video but that was something he specifically called out in this most recent analyst call and a position or outlook that I can really align with as an investor in this company. So they're now in phase two which is manufacturing and they're utilizing their technical expertise and full suite of manufacturing capabilities 
to develop unique product portfolio and maximize margins. So we're going to see their facilities and also their product offerings in a second here. But you can see they're really expanding both their production capabilities with bringing new facilities online, specifically the K2 facility and the GTA facility, which is nearing completion. They've also acquired Life, which is an edibles company based in Kelowna as well. And they're also now expanding in terms of new MJ 2.0 and 3.0 products, which we're going to look at in a second here. Now, phase three, and this was referred to on the conference call as well, is the international opportunity or global manufacturing. So they already have a presence in Australia, but they're looking to generate global revenue in high margin, large markets by leveraging the experience they've built here in Canada, the best practices they have, and the platform that they can repeat and build out in other countries. So I wanted to share this slide next, and this shows the various different extraction techniques that the Valens company currently employs. And this is very beneficial to this company and really differentiates them from a lot of the other extractors who traditionally focus just on the supercritical CO2 extraction. So you can see that that's the first one listed here. They use that to build out capsules, tinctures, vapes, topicals, beverages, edibles, and serums. So you can see the CO2 extraction is very versatile and that's why a lot of companies really focus on this. You really can hit a lot of the different product categories categories through the CO2 method, but there's definitely some that you can't. So the solventless extraction produces things like rosin, hash, and a full spectrum of different distillates. The ethanol extraction, again, is a different way to achieve capsules, tinctures, vapes, topicals, beverages, and edibles. So very similar to CO2, a very wide product offering. They then have hydrocarbon extraction, which gives them the opportunity to build out concentrates, vapes, shatter or wax, along with crumble, live resin, and full spectrum. And then their terpene extraction actually allows them to add back the experience, flavor, and smell of the actual input or dried flour into these extracted products. And that's very unique and something that really allows them to differentiate their final products from some of the competition. Now because of those various different extraction techniques, the Valens company has really positioned itself to offer a full spectrum of products and they talked about this on the conference call as well. One thing that's so cool about this company is because they're not actually producing or growing any of the input themselves, they have the opportunity to source flour or the raw material from any number of different LPs. Now this, number one, gives them a cost advantage because they can obviously pick and choose which company they want to buy from to get the best possible going rate per gram. And it also gives them the opportunity to offer more variety than some of the companies that are locked into their own strains, which paves the way for seasonal offerings, specialty offerings, limited editions, and general flexibility with their product lines. And this was actually mentioned on the conference call as well. One of the analysts asked about the seasonal or special products, and they were talking about how their launch of pre-rolls is going to do exactly that. So the Valens company is now getting into the flower space. They're going to be producing pre-roll joints that are coming online in Q2, and they said they're going to be able to produce those in a more cost-effective way than any other company in the industry. On a scale of good, better to best, they're going after the better market, so kind of the midpoint, and they feel like because of this unique value proposition and ability to source from a variety of LPs, they're going to be able to really disrupt this market, and this is the first of many disruptive activities they're looking to do in F21. Now returning to the slide here, you can see the Valens company offers products in each of these different segments. So whether it's capsules, tinctures, vapes, beverages, which are performing extremely well, concentrates, edibles through their new life acquisition, or topicals, they really do have products in each and every category. They just recently released bath bombs and they're getting more and more into the MJ 3.0 products as well, but very exciting. And when you stack them up to other companies, so Medifarm Labs, for example, is another predominantly extraction based company. They only offer a fraction of the product lines that Valens currently does. Neptune is another extractor. You can see here they only have three different product categories. And even some of the big boys like Canopy, Aurora, and Afria don't yet have products in each and every category. Now this slide is a continuation on the last. You can see how they've kind of segmented the products into 1.0 products, 
2.0 and then future 3.0 product launches. The most notable launches that they're currently manufacturing here are the edibles and the topicals. So there's what the bath bomb looks like itself. And then they're looking to innovate and bring additional products through their pipeline in coming months. So I just saw on their Instagram, they're now experimenting with triple chocolate brownies. They've also got a variety of serums in the work, caramels, edibles, toffees, things that can enhance the experience for the end user that are currently in the pipeline. And that life acquisition, because it's located in Kelowna, they've got a lot of synergies there, and it's a full end-to-end -end edible production space that they were able to fold in. Now the life acquisition was not reflected in Q1 numbers, so when we get into the earning report here in a second, just keep in mind those benefits have not yet been realized and the revenues are not shown in Q1, but that's gonna be a big catalyst for this company moving forward as well. So we spoke a few slides ago about this company really entering the MJ space as an extractor, and they had a number of agreements with third-party companies at that point in time. They've now continued to build out that strategy with a variety of different manufacturing agreements as well. So I wanted to show this slide because it really does show the number of brands they're currently working with. Now on the extraction front, you can see some notable names like Canopy, T God, which I just released a video on last week, and then obviously G Tech Holdings, which is another one we've talked about on the channel. Hexo and Organigram are huge players in this space, but I haven't yet released videos on them in any detail. In the middle, they've got extraction and manufacturing agreements. So the most recent one here was with Rubicon Organics, another organic provider that's starting to compete with T God or the Green Organic Dutchman, Emerald Therapeutics, Sundial, and Tantalus. And then in terms of white label and custom manufacturing agreements, they've got a number here, most notably Verse, Shoppers Drug Mart, and Source. And Source and Verse are actually involved in the drink space and have a huge runway in front of them. We're starting to see now that the MJ infused drinks are very popular and selling extremely well across Canada. So these two are particularly exciting. So now that we've talked about how the Valens company entered the market, the different products and companies they've partnered with, I wanted to pause for a second and talk about their actual facility expansion. So they currently have four facilities that are completed or nearing completion. Two of them are located in Kelowna here. So for those of you not familiar, this is Kelowna, BC. It's located in the interior in British Columbia, a very beautiful place. I actually spent about 10 years of my life here going to university. So I'm very familiar with a lot of these companies and some of the people involved with them. But Kelowna has a long history with the illicit MJ market. And because of that, there's a lot of knowledge and expertise located in this city. And I think this really positions them well for the emerging legal market here in Canada and the United States. Obviously, there's quite a technique and craft in growing, curating, manufacturing this stuff. And there's a lot of people in this city that have a very deep and solid understanding of the MJ market and industry overall. So I wanted to make a note to mention that. Now back to this slide here, these two facilities, so the K1 was their original one located at 230 Carry On Road. They then have the K2 facility that's located just down the street here. These are both involved in the MJ processing. So this is where they actually create a lot of their crude, distillate, full spectrum, isolate, formulation and emulsion products. Now they just acquired the Life facility which is also located in Kelowna, BC. So as mentioned there's a lot of synergies there in terms of geographic location and just the ability to cross pollinate between the two facilities. They did mention in their earnings call that they've integrated a lot of the key players from that company into the bigger Valens family. So again, I think it's great to retain that talent, knowledge, and expertise. Life and the new GTA facility, which is coming online in Q2 of 2021, are going to really focus on the white label and custom manufacturing. So between the carry-on facilities, K1 and 2, they're gonna have both the processing and white labeling custom manufacturing. The life facility and the GTA facility are gonna be more exclusively focused on the manufacturing side of things. So at the life facility, this is where they're really gonna focus on the edibles. Things like chocolates, gummies, toffees, brownies, some of the products we just looked at. 
and they called out on the investor presentation that they have the ability to make some really cool and unique products here. So things that are sugar-free, low sugar, natural ingredient or organic. So really able to differentiate themselves from some of the other companies that are currently producing edibles in this space. Now the GTA facility, as the name implies, is going to be located in the Toronto area. And this is really where they're going to focus on the emulsion technology, the beverages and the co-packing. So I think that's interesting. Number one, to give them a presence on the East Coast, very close to some of the biggest markets in the United States, like for example, New York, which we just saw pass their recreational bill a few weeks ago here. In addition to that, the drinks really seem to be something that are selling a lot better than initially expected. And their Source A emulsion technology is industry leading in terms of the onset, the effect, and the overall experience of that product. Now between these facilities, they're going to have just about 80,000 square feet of fully licensed manufacturing space with most of the products leaving the K1 facility in the form of bulk oil. And then on the flip side, leaving the Life, GTA, and K2 facility, most of the products are going to be going out the door as consumer packaged goods ready for Sale. Now one thing that we really haven't looked at in a lot of other presentations but I think is a great way to really judge if a company's healthy, growing and a good investment is looking at their careers page. Generally companies only hire for new positions if they feel like they need additional resources to support their growth. You very rarely see companies that are struggling financially having a wide variety of open career opportunities. So if you look at the Valens career page here, you can see a wide array of current positions available, very recently posted, so April and late March. Everything from millwrights to graphic designers, security positions, data entry, director positions, so high leadership level positions, all the way down the totem pole to warehouse technicians and even sanitation technicians. So this is really exciting to me. I know a number of people who work at Valens. They say the work culture is extremely positive and every day it seems like they're getting more and more busy. So that's great to hear as an investor in this company. So now we're gonna get into the really exciting stuff here, guys. This is the news that just came out yesterday. It talks about their earnings for the first quarter of fiscal 2021. This was an earnings report that I was extremely excited about and really anticipating some big numbers and they definitely delivered on my expectations. Now keep in mind, they have not yet included the life acquisition in Q1, so they do have a number of additional catalysts coming online in Q2, such as the life acquisition and some of the new product offerings like the flower pre-rolls. But Q1 was absolutely blockbuster and really positioned this company in the top echelons of MJ related companies. So net revenue was $20 million for Q1. So on an annualized basis, which we're going to look at, they're projecting just over $80 million of revenue for fiscal year 2021. This was up nearly 25% from Q4 of 2020, which came in at $16 million. They managed to grow provincial sales by 7.6% quarter over quarter. And keep in mind, this is during a global pandemic. They mentioned on the call, but Ontario was shut down or in lockdown for just about every day of this quarter. And they opted for a click and collect online retail experience. So this is very impressive to me that the company was able to grow provincial sales at such a healthy rate despite such an abnormal and difficult operating environment. They now estimate that they own 5.5% of the extracted based market in Alberta, British Columbia and Ontario which is up from 4.9% in Q4 of 2020. So again, phenomenal to see that growth and market penetration in all three of the provinces that they currently operate in. Now they are trying to expand into other markets here in Canada, including Quebec, which is ultimately going to drive that top line revenue even further. But it's great to see they have such a strong hold and brand recognition in their current markets. And then the final point they call out here is they've actually manufactured just about one and a half million units of finished goods over the last 12 months. And keep in mind the K2 facility, which is their big manufacturing center, just came online recently here. So they haven't even had this one in operation at full capacity for any length of time. So I see this number growing exponentially in the next few quarters. Now, if we scroll down into the key highlights, there's a couple other things I wanted to mention here. So you can see product sales represented 90% of their net revenue in Q1. So this really stresses that shift in mentality 
from an extraction-based company to a product or CPG, consumer packaged goods approach. So that's exciting to see. Now, obviously there are some growing pains there. There are lower margins in this space, but this is the future for this company. And they understand that there's a time and a place for everything. They were able to use the extraction capabilities at the start to really build their business platform and backbone. And they're now setting up to ramp up production and move into that CPG space, which is ultimately where they want the future of this company to be. Now they're currently Canada's largest third party vape manufacturer. So that's a phenomenal stat and accolade for this company. They have the second best selling vape SKU, which is their tropical lemon one gram vape cartridge in Alberta, BC and Ontario. And they had a cash position at the end of the quarter of $49 million. So about an eighth or 13% of their company market cap is actually sitting in cash, which is phenomenal. And Tyler spoke to this as well. He said, quote, we raise money for a reason and they're really going to use a lot of this war chest that they've assembled to start pursuing some strategic acquisitions to gain exposure to the United States market. And that was a question that came up on the call a number of times. Valens really understands that the U.S. market is where shareholders want this company to be. They mentioned changes in the White House and the changing evolving stance on MJ in the United States. So I would be surprised if this company doesn't announce some acquisitions or some joint ventures in the United States in the next couple of months. Now they did mention they're in late stage discussion with a number of different companies. So I'm not sure how that's ultimately going to look, but I see this as a huge catalyst again, moving forward for the Valens company. They also provided a quick update on the GTA facility. So this is going to add an additional 30,000 square feet of manufacturing space, which we saw as part of that 77,000 square foot total. They have now submitted their final site evidence package to Health Canada to get that facility fully approved and operational. And they expect this to be up and running and actually shipping out their first products in the second half of this year. So again, phenomenal to see. And as we discussed, this facility is really going to focus on the MJ infused beverages for both 2.0 and 3.0 products in partnership with that Source A technology. Now to finish off the article here, they do talk about some of their 2021 strategic initiatives. So a few that are worth calling out here, they do mention they are on track to get their EU GMP certification by year end. This is one that we just talked about in the TGOD video and is essential to import and export products internationally, which will give them further access to the United States and other international markets. They've now fully closed the life food technologies which we've mentioned a number of times in this video they've stepped into the topicals category with the launch of nuance cbd bath bombs which again we looked at in the product slide now in addition to this they're looking to launch bombs menthol rubs soft chews honey and a variety of different flavors and formats of their bath bombs so that's super exciting and something to keep an eye on moving forward and then finally they talk about their custom manufacturing agreement with rubicon organics and their ability to produce organic certified co2 extracted products as part of this agreement so again super exciting stuff you guys and a number of things on the roadmap are coming down the pipe in the next couple of quarters here for us now if we now jump over to my comparison file here you may have seen this in some of my other videos but I use this document to get a rough understanding of how companies in a similar industry stack up against each other so you can see I've put in the share price market cap quarterly revenue and quarterly EBITDA for six of the top companies that I follow in this space Tilt is another one that just reported earnings today and we're going to talk about in the next week or so but they look extremely attractive to me all of these numbers are in US dollars, so I've actually converted the Valens share price into US dollars, which comes in at 201. Their market cap in US would come in at 295 million. And if we take their quarterly revenue of 21.8 million, we use a 1.26 exchange rate, you actually get $17.3 million US in terms of quarterly revenue. Now the green cells here you can see are calculated. So these are actually annualized totals based on the quarterly results. For some of the companies, you'll notice there is no green space, and this is because they've recently reported full year results. So these are actual totals. However, in the case of Valens, we had to calculate or annualize their revenue and their EBITDA based on Q1 results. So if we plug the numbers in, you can see that Valens is trading at a multiple 
of 4.3 in terms of market cap to revenue with a negative market cap to EBITDA ratio of 42.3. Now I'm not so worried about the EBITDA because they are adjusted EBITDA numbers. There's definitely some fancy accounting treatments there for all the companies that report adjusted EBITDA. And to be honest, a lot of these companies are really in a growth cycle. They're not producing a lot of profits or earnings at this point in time. So I'm more focused on the market cap to revenue ratio. Now aside from tilt, which again we'll talk about and I'm extremely bullish on, that's actually my second largest position overall in all of my accounts and has a ton of US exposure. Valens comes in the cheapest of any of these big players by far. So Cresco Labs you can see is one of the big boys in this space. It comes in at under six in terms of market cap to revenue. So Valens is actually better off than Cresco but compared to Afria, Tilray, or Canopy, you're getting a massive discount in terms of this company's share price and overall market cap. And this is something they mentioned in the call as well. Management feels like Valens share price is fundamentally undervalued and they're actually using that to their advantage in a lot of these merger acquisition talks in the United States. So they're using Valens shares rather than cash in a lot of these discussions and really providing additional value to potential partners by offering them discounted shares of their company versus deploying or potentially deploying some of that cash war chest that we saw. Now the other thing that works to Valens benefit here when they're dealing with US companies is obviously the exchange rate. So not only is Valens discounted when you're looking apples to apples, but when US companies see a Canadian company like this and they then apply their dollar premium, the value proposition for Valens shares gets that much more attractive. Now this slide's interesting because it actually shows average analyst estimates for the next three years of operation. So if we look at 2021, you can see average revenue estimate came in at $116 million Canadian, which actually works out to $92 million US. So it's above my estimate because I projected based on Q1, and obviously there's gonna be growth throughout the year. So that's even more encouraging and means my numbers are even more conservative. As we ramp up into 2022 and 2023, they're expected to get up in the 180 to $210 million Canadian range in terms of revenue and be positive in terms of earnings per share by 2022. Now you can see adjusted EBITDA absolutely explodes between 2021 and 2022 and then continues to grow handsomely as the years progress from there. Now they do a very similar calculation to what I do here, but they use enterprise value, which actually takes into account all of the fully diluted shares, plus things like debt, cash, and cash equivalents into the equation. But the story it tells is very similar, and you can see that Valens, enterprise value to revenue is substantially lower than the Canadian MJ peers in this space. So for 2021, they're estimated to be trading at a multiple of 3.2 versus an industry average of 8.7. And by 2023, they're under a two times multiple versus the industry average of 5.7. Now again, they do a very similar calculation of enterprise value to EBITDA, and you can see that the numbers are just as impressive here. So by 2023, Valens is expected to be trading at a 7.7 .7 multiple in terms of enterprise value to EBITDA, versus the industry average of nearly 37 times. Now continuing on from that last slide, this is a summary of all the different brokerages or analysts that are currently covering the Valens company. Their various ratings, and their current price targets in Canadian dollars. So you can see on the absolute low end here, they have a $2 price target with the highest of any of these firms coming in at $5. So I think there's tremendous upside for this company moving forward. With a current share price sub $3, I feel like this is a very attractive buy and offers really good risk reward potential. Now I personally think a lot of the analyst estimates in terms of revenue and earnings per share are going to be low. I think Valens is going to announce some big partnerships or acquisitions in the next few months that are going to give them exposure to the United States market. And with such a deep and well-established product portfolio, I think they're going to be able to hit the ground running there. Not to mention they have the GTA facility coming online, a number of new partnerships, and the Life Foods acquisition, 
which is going to come into play in Q2 here. So overall, you guys, to wrap this video up, I was extremely impressed with earnings. I had a feeling that this company would deliver in Q1, which they did. I'm very comfortable with my investment here. I'm actually looking to continue adding shares anywhere in that 250 or under kind of range in terms of Canadian share price. This is a company that I'm going to hold on to for the next five to 10 years. And I definitely think this is one that's going to be an extremely profitable investment for me long term. Now, if you haven't already, please take a second to like this video. It definitely helps get the content out to other people of similar interest who might find value like yourself. If you don't already subscribe to the channel, please do so. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.